All right, Bob, thanks. As we approach the one year anniversary of Sandy Hook this weekend, tonight a look at some of what we have learned. After Sandy Hook, some of the top trauma surgeons in the country, including some here in Connecticut, put together a think tank to try to come up with a plan to save lives of more of the wounded in a mass shooting like Sandy Hook. Their findings have now been adopted as the new federal government guidelines for handling mass shootings, and they are controversial. They want medical personnel injected into the danger zone while the shooting is still going on. But there are some who question that plan, including the Connecticut State Police. When the horror of Sandy Hook played out in front of Connecticut and the world, Hartford Hospital trauma surgeon Dr. Lenworth Jacobs had one thought. Some good had to come of this. Dr. Jacobs put together what became the Hartford Consensus, a group of medical professionals, police, fire, FBI, and military to look at how to save the lives of more people who are shot in a mass shooting. The medical answer is simple. Stop the bleeding faster. The classic reason that you die from these events is bleeding. So you have to identify the bleeding and stop it or start to stop it very quickly. The group says the best way to do that is to get medical professionals to the wounded even when bullets may still be flying. There's a hot zone or danger zone where there's an active shooter. That is a highly dangerous place. There's a warm zone which is out of line of sight of the shooter but still has danger associated with it. And there's a cold zone which is safe. And classically, the medical response has been quarantined in the safe or cold zone, and law enforcement is in the hot or danger zone. The Hartford consensus found that getting medical personnel quickly, at least into the warm zone, and having some officers in the hot zone deal with the wounded instead of the shooter will save lives. If there are four or five policemen there, you want, and somebody is bleeding, at least one of them needs to address that bleeding right now and move that patient back to where the medical people can take care of them. The group says a perfect example of how fast medical attention saved lives is the Boston Marathon bombing. The blast left more than 260 people with incredibly serious wounds there. Some of them lost limbs, but in the end, only three people died. In Boston, the public got involved, the first responders got involved, Really significant and severe injuries were dealt with immediately, transported to hospital, and the survival rate was absolutely phenomenal. But bringing medical personnel into an active shooting scene has great risk, and Connecticut State Police say the risk may be too great. We're not bringing anyone with us. We're, we don't have medical personnel with us. We don't have uh, any outsiders with us, if you will. But also understand that, that uh, every trooper in the state of Connecticut has been trained in emergency care. And we have certain equipment that we carry that we're able to utilize in a hot zone uh, to provide immediate emergency care. Lieutenant J. Paul Vance of the Connecticut State Police says every tactical team on the state force already has a medical professional. But in the chaos of an active shooter scene when the first couple of officers there have to take on the threat head on, the new federal guidelines are just too dangerous. That's the real situation. There's no chance for second guessing and it can be extremely dangerous. Uh, and, and, and certainly we would, we would be very cautious looking at something like that. Now the group did determine that having doctors inside Sandy Hook Elementary sooner last December would not have made any difference because the wounds were just that severe. But they insist that as these situations come up, the risk of putting medical professionals close to what's happening will pay off by saving more lives.